The Democratic Party has lost support among a key voting bloc following its ineffective behavior in getting Congress to pass legislation to keep the child tax credit permanent. So since the child tax credit has expired, it appears that the recipients of that child tax credit have now switched over their support to the Republican Party. Oops. I'm not kidding. This is according to polling from Morning Consult. And so here are the details. Among parents or guardians with at least one child under 18 in the household who received the expanded child tax credit payments, 46% said they are most likely to vote for Republican congressional candidate this year, while 43% said they're inclined to back the Democratic candidate. The narrow GOP advantage among this group stands in contrast with Democrats lead of 12 percentage points in late December before the benefit expired. So you can kind of draw some dots here or you know connect the dots yeah. where it's clear. I mean, Democrats were doing well with this demo just a few months ago, December. And then the incredibly popular program expires. And immediately we see the ramifications of that. And look, the fact of the matter is you need to have something to offer voters that contrasts with what Republicans wanna do. You have to offer them something that's better than what Republicans offer voters. And what do Republicans offer voters? They might use rhetoric that might convince some people that they're economic populists, they're not. What they really do is they peddle fear, uh, they're smear merchants when it comes to people of color, immigrants, but fear sells. And fear is especially effective when the opposition to that party doesn't really have much to offer. Let's just keep it real. And that's what the Democratic Party is dealing with right now. Yeah. So look, up by 12, child tax credit ends, down by three. So that's not a little swing, that's a massive swing. And so. Politics is actually not that hard, guys. So the Young Turks audience probably understands it better than almost any reporter, or I would dare say almost any politician in the country. So where, what do people care about the most? The things that affect them the most. They were getting a check for their, in the form of the child tax credit, and it was helping them tremendously. And we had lifted half of the kids that were in poverty out of poverty through the child tax credit. Mm -hmm. When your kid used to be in poverty and then they're not anymore, nothing affects you more. And so at that time, they're thinking Democrats not so bad and Democrats are leading, right? Despite all of the other problems Democrats have, they're terrible at messaging, we can go on and on. But they're leading because people are going, okay, that is positively affecting my life. And apparently the Democrats did it, right? Every Republican voted against it. So then think about it, what happens next? Manchin kills the child tax credit. And Manchin's a Democrat. So the whole country hears a Democrat killed the one thing that they loved and was most impacting their life. A Democrat killed it. Now, what are they supposed to think? You think they follow politics as closely as we do or a lot of you do? No, most people don't follow politics that closely at all. They just hear who killed it, Oh, a Democrat killed it. Now, this is the most important part because everyone leaves it there. Like Chris Hayes tweeted today, he's generally a good guy. Uh, MSNBC host, probably the best of them. But still, he misunderstands politics completely. I, I, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. I think he genuinely misunderstands it. He says, this is single handedly Manchin's fault. That's not at all true. It's Biden's fault. Because if Biden had then taken on Joe Manchin, then what would the country have heard? The Democratic president is trying desperately to keep the child tax credit. He's fighting for the child tax credit. God damn it, Manchin's like a Republican. And by the way, Biden could literally say that. I don't know why we have a Democratic senator agreeing with every Republican in killing the child tax credit. How many times did Biden say that? Zero. How many times did Saki say it? Zero. How many times did any Democrat outside of the progressives, just Democrats say it? Zero. So instead of the country hearing a Democratic lion president, Fighting for child tax credit, they heard him basically agreeing with Manchin. Oh, so it was the Democrats who killed it. Mm-hmm. What are they supposed to think? Of course, that's why the popular of the Democrats fell off a cliff. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. More importantly, I mean, 
Look, I think that the Democratic Party is also under this weird assumption that the average American voter is going to hear about the Senate filibuster or the parliamentarian and excuse the ineffective nature of the Democratic Party as they have control of the executive branch and Congress. Let me just say, the average American voter is not going to buy the argument that all we need to do is elect more Democrats. Nobody's gonna buy that. The, There's only one set of people, and I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. that would believe that, and that is older MSNBC voters. And you could say, hey, I'm being a jerk, but I'm being factual. So those people are completely brainwashed by Rachel Maddow and the rest. Oh, the parliamentarian is the most important thing. There's nothing Biden could do. There's nothing Biden could do. And I see them, then they'll come on Twitter and they'll be like, oh no, poor Biden, he's impotent. He can't do anything. He's an invalid. He's just sitting in a in, in the White House drooling. There's nothing he can do, Jake. He has no power at all. And fighting's bad. Fighting's terrible. You should never fight Republicans. You should never fight corporate Democrats. You should always just give in to them. Just surrender. Please surrender. So, but outside of those MSNBC voters, which I the reason I emphasize it, guys, is because unfortunately, that's a powerful block in the Democratic primaries. They swing a lot of Democratic primaries. They do. MSNBC brainwashes them into make sure you pick the weakest and most corrupt Democrats. And they go, oh, yeah, no, nothing you can do, nothing you can do. We should lose. Just lose. It's okay. Just lose, right? But the rest of the country, independents, progressives, and honestly, all other Democrats are going, are you insane? What is wrong with you? Why don't you fight back? Why don't you fight? But guys, even if Biden doesn't win, rhetorically, it's super important it is. It's that so you important. see the president fighting for you. That's so true. That's such a good point, Jenk. Because listen, we've been making this argument ever since the debates over Build Back Better began, right? And some people in the audience would say, well, I mean, okay, you want Biden to use tougher rhetoric, you want him to use sticks, but what if that doesn't work? Just the nature of, you know, just the optics of the president fighting on behalf of what the American people want, even if he fails in the end, matters. But what we got from Biden during that debate, during that so called battle, was a bunch of complimentary statements about mansion, about cinema, referred to cinema as smart, mansion's a great guy. I mean, there was nothing but, you know, complacency among Biden administration officials, excuse after excuse. And then, you know, when you don't see the president fighting on behalf of his own policies, it gives off the vibe that he doesn't really stand for anything. Because that he, doesn't. he doesn't. And that's he, the problem. And, and guys, that's the underlying problem. Why doesn't he ever fight for his so called agenda? Because it's not really his agenda. It was all marketing so that MSNBC hosts can go out there and tell everybody, oh, Joe Biden is in favor of the child tax rate. Oh, Joe Biden is in favor of lowering drug prices. Joe Biden is in favor of all these incredibly popular things. Oh, my God, but there's nothing he could do. They haven't, I mean, we have the House, we have the Senate, we have the White House, but there's nothing we can do because the parliamentarian and mansion and cinema and my all, all my other BS excuses, right? No one cares about your excuses, no one cares. All they see is either you actually agree with Manchin, that's my vote. I think Biden never meant any of his agenda. I, I think that he loved that Manchin killed it. I think he totally agrees with Manchin. Now, okay, every MSNBC host, oh, conspiratorial, I can't, I can't believe that. I mean, just because they have the same exact donors and the same exact policies. I mean, remember Biden, though, is pretending to have different policies. Wow, you're so convincing. Okay, but let's say I'm wrong. Well, then what's your other explanation? The only other explanation is Biden is impotent. So MSNBC hosts go out there and celebrate how much of a loser your president is and that he can't ever fight back. And if he did, he would automatically lose. He has no chance, he shouldn't even try. He shouldn't even try to fight back. And you think that's a winning strategy in politics? No one could possibly be that stupid. But yet, seemingly intelligent hosts like Rachel Maddow, every night they come out and tell you, submit, bend your neck, and, and vote for weak Democrats who never even fight for you. And they get people to believe that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, 
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.